Now in this section of the tutorial, what we want to do is focus on a really, really important uh, topic that you're going to use the calculator for almost continually in Algebra 2 and, and on in Calculus and Trigonometry and everything, and that is the topic of complex numbers or imaginary numbers. And so what we want to do in this section is, first of all, learn how to input uh, complex numbers into the calculator, learn how to do some basic you know, operations with them, and then we'll also go into the math menu. There's an entire complex menu in there that um, that's used for all the uh, the functions associated with complex numbers. So, uh, if you have no idea what a complex number is, then it's probably better for you just to skip this section unless you just want to try to learn through osmosis. But if you're in any of these classes where you've ever had to deal with I, which is the you know the complex number, the imaginary number, then um, you'll be right at home here. First thing is go into the mode menu. And you will see down here at the bottom, uh, right here, this line here. Right now, the calculator is in real mode. That means that any of the numbers that I input into this calculator, it's just going to assume that they're all real numbers. Now, if I ever want to operate outside of that, uh, which typically you're doing quite a bit in advanced math, then you'll want to go to one of these modes here. So basically, you can either input uh, numbers into the calculator and for complex numbers into rectangular uh, notation, where you have the real part plus the imaginary part, or a completely equivalent way to write uh, complex numbers is to write it in the, the polar form where you have a magnitude out here r um, and then you have e raised to the power of some angle uh, which is imaginary. So these are, if you have no idea what I'm talking about here then it just means you hadn't studied this in school yet so you'll, you'll get it when you, once you get there. But for those of you that have, you should know that um, when you write a complex number down, which is a, a number that has a, a real part and an imaginary part, you can either write it in rectangular form or polar form, and that's just sort of something that you learn in your class. So for now, let's go into rectangular form. So that means that any time I do a calculation in this calculator and it needs to return a complex number, it's going to return it in um, rectangular form. So let's just take the easiest possible thing. We'll take the square root of um, of negative one, right? And so, you know, from basic algebra, you can't do the square root of negative one. But once you get into imaginary numbers, you'll find out that this is just the definition of the imaginary number i. So you see, it returned the number i like that, which is an imaginary number. If you had, um, you know, the square root of, whoops, let me go back here and take that parenthesis out. If you had the square root of negative three, uh, actually, let me go ahead and do something a little different. Negative four, let's say and did that, then it's going to take the square root of 4 all right, and you're going to get the 2, but it's going to stick an i out there. Uh, so let's say you had uh, something a little different, logarithms. You're not really uh, ever supposed to take the logarithm of a negative number either. It's, it seems to be undefined, but we know now when you get into more advanced math, when you take the logarithm of a negative number, it's, it's not really undefined. It just returns a complex number. Now you see this complex number is a lot of decimal points, and it scrolls off the screen. But there's a decimal here, which is the real part, and then here, which scrolls off off the screen. This is the imaginary part. Now, if you if you tap your um, if you tap the right arrow, then you'll start to see that this imaginary part scroll by, and you'll see that it's 3.14, you know, I like that. Now, here is where it's handy to go back into the mode menu and go to your floating point and just go ahead and set it to maybe you know three decimal points or something and hit enter. And then when we go out of that. If I recall exactly what I entered before and just do the exact same calculation again, you see it truncates everything to three decimal points. So it's 0.693, which is the real part, plus 3.142 for the imaginary part. So this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. And the reason it's spitting it out in rectangular form is just because we have in the mode menu, we have rectangular form selected. But let's go down and let's select uh, polar form. So we'll go ahead and hit enter there. And so now any calculation that the calculator is going to spit back, that's going to need to return a complex number. I'm just going to hit last entry again. Uh, it's not going to return it like that. It's going to return it in polar form. So here, instead of real plus imaginary, you have a magnitude out here. And then you have uh, you know, 
e raised to the power of, of, a, of an exponent, which has i in it. So if you don't quite understand why this is the case, you know, you just haven't studied this in school yet, but basically you can convert back and forth between rectangular form and polar form. Sometimes it's easier to work in rectangular form. Sometimes it's much, much easier to deal in polar form. In electric circuits, for instance, it's much easier to deal in polar form than it is to deal in rectangular form. And your calculator, by the way, can convert between these two forms. We're going to learn how to do that here in a few minutes, too. But I'm just showing you that if you change the mode menu to polar form, then all of these calculations are going to come back in polar form. Even if we go back and do the simple square root of negative uh, 1, which just returned i the first time, it's not going to return i. It's going to return 1 times e raised to the power of 90i. Now that's a little bit weird. It's 90i. The reason it's 90i is because I've actually got my, my calculator set in degrees, which you almost never do, especially when you're dealing in, in, in uh, um, with complex numbers. If I do the exact same thing again, now it's going to return something different. It's going to return uh, 1 e raised to the power of 1.57. Now the reason it changed is because this is basically, um, this is basically uh, pi over 2 pi over 2i. So the conversion is basically automatic. When you go, when you're in degrees, it's returning this angle in degrees. And when it's in radians, it's, it's returning this angle in radians because this is e raised to the, the angle theta times i. So that's the basics of working with complex numbers. Now, if we go back into your, um, if we go back into the mode menu and we go back and select um, rectangular form, then we'll be able to see how to input these guys. It's a little bit easier to start with inputting here. Let's say we have 1 plus 2i. How do I do i? I go second function down here to the little i. 1 plus 2i. And let's say I want to add to that, I'm going to open up another parentheses, 3 plus 4i. i is down here, so I'm going to do second function. And I'm in rectangular form, so I can just hit enter, and it's going to add them. So you add the real parts, 3 plus 1 is 4. And the imaginary parts, 2 plus 4 is 6. So we have 4 plus 6i. So you can do um, calculations uh, directly, directly in there. Now let me show you something pretty cool. If I go back in the mode menu and I go ahead and select um, polar form, then I can input exactly the same thing. And I'm still typing it in rectangular form. It's going to compute the answer, but it's going to spit it back to me in polar form. So that's basically the easiest way that you could actually convert between rectangular and polar. If you want to convert to polar, then the easiest way to do it is really just to, just to set your calculator in polar setting, which is right there. So I go back out of quit, and I say, all right, I've got 4 minus 6i. I want to go to polar, so I'm already in polar mode. I input it like this which is rectangular, and then I hit enter, and it's going to convert 7.2 e to the negative 0.98 i. So that's polar mode. And if I want to convert, uh, if I have an, a um, polar uh, representation that I want to convert to rectangular, then the easiest way to do that is to do exactly the, the same thing in reverse. Now let me show you this. The way you input a polar number is the following. So let's say you had 4 e, so e is right here, raised to the power of, and you always really should, should um, you really always should, should put this in, uh, like let's say it was 2i, you really should put 2i uh, up like this, just to make sure that the calculator knows that the exponent of e is raised to the power of 2i, and 2i is really up there um, in the exponent. And so when you evaluate this, I input this polar uh, guy here, and it's going to spit out a rectangular form. Um, so that's something that's really that, that's really useful and really neat for you. So you know, if you take something a little bit easier, maybe it's one times e raised to the power of, let's say, um, uh, let's let's raise it to the power of um, of zero. So the angle of zero i, right? So this is a magnitude one, but it's at an angle of zero, and so when we Put, spit this guy out it's just going to return one because it's it's purely real at that point so it's doing it's doing even if you can't follow all of this in your head you know i'm i'm a little bit faster at it because i've done it for so many years but the calculator can handle this for you you put the polar form in the calculator is already in rectangular so anything that it spits back out on the screen is going to be automatically converted for you is really sort of the bottom line okay now 
what I want to do is go and explore inside the math menu. We've, we've done some of this, this menu here. We've done the number menu. Now go to the complex menu. There's a whole bunch of functions that operate basically on, on imaginary and complex numbers. And so we're going to go through each of these. Now these are really actually very simple to understand if you know what the mathematical term is. The first one is a complex conjugate. You hit this guy, and first of all, I'll just go ahead and say, these functions, actually almost all of them, you probably won't use them that much because some of these things are just, once you learn them, they're not really hard to do anyway in your head. Complex conjugate. You should know that if you have the complex conjugate and you're operating on an imaginary number like this, so this is rectangular for 4 plus i, then the complex conjugate is basically you just put a negative sign in front of the imaginary part. No matter where i is, you just stick a negative in front. That's the definition of the conjugate, and so that's what it returns here. Um, if I were to put the, the calculator in, um, we'll do it this one time here. If I were to put the calculator in polar form for my numbers, then I could do exactly the same thing. I could go into the math menu. I'll go over to the complex tab, hit the conjugate button. Now if I wanted to put a number in uh, in terms of, uh, of polar form, let's say it was 2e raised to the power of 8i, let's say. Go ahead and make sure your exponent is always in wrapped up in parentheses right now. If I want to do the conjugate and hit this, then it's going to uh, spit that out. And it did return the correct answer, but this particular example is a little bit difficult to follow because the angle I picked was a little bit a little bit too big. But if I go back into the angle uh, into the uh, math menu and go and hit conjugate again, and put let's say let's do a simpler problem problem two e raised to the power of 0.5 i, so a much much smaller angle, uh, and then go ahead and take the conjugate of it, then the calculator is going to return two raised to the power of uh, e raised to the power of negative 0.5i. So you see this is the imaginary part, it just sticks a negative in there. That's what a complex conjugate does and that's why I don't want to say that this is a silly function to have, it's just that I don't think you're going to use it that much. Once you understand what a conjugate is, it's just really easy. You put a negative right in front of in front of the deal, in front of the imaginary part. Same thing with real and imaginary functions down here. These basically serve exactly the same purpose. Let me go ahead and put the calculator back into uh, into uh, rectangular form, it'll just be a little bit easier to, to visualize. If we go back into the math menu and go back to the complex tab and let's select the real part. So this function is going to return the real part of whatever complex number you put in there. So if I put 7 minus 8i, well we know from this that the real part is this and the imaginary part is this. So when I hit this button it's just going to return 7. Uh, likewise if I go in here to the complex menu and select imaginary, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's do 7 minus 8i just to show you exactly what these functions are doing. I'm putting exactly the same in the thing in there. All it's going to return is negative 8 because this is the imaginary part. Um, it all works exactly the same if you have um, if you have the calculator in polar form as well. The only difference is you're just inputting the number differently. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just go into the math menu and show you what happens when you want to take the imaginary part of a number that you've put in, in complex form. So in, in, a, in, terms of a, in terms of a polar representation. So let's say you put 1 times e raised to the power of 0.3i. Always in this calculator make sure that when you raise this exponential up to, to your uh, complex part, you always put the, the whatever i in ter, inside of parentheses, but otherwise the calculator is going to interpret it wrong. But if you put this here and try to take the imaginary part, then what you're going to get is 0.296. Now, you're not really able to read this directly off like you could in the rectangular form because of the way this is written. This is a magnitude and this is an angle. But if you were to convert this uh, polar representation of, of complex number, if you would convert it to rectangular, then you would be able to read it uh, directly off, which brings me uh, to my next uh, topic. So let's do that. Let's say we have one, let's type the same angle in, one times e raised to the power of 0.3i, right? So this is it. I'm going to close the parentheses here. Always raise the, ex the uh, exponent here up to, to a parentheses when you put your, your imaginary part. And let's go, and so we type that in there. Let's go into the math menu. 
to the complex function down and let's convert it to rectangular. That's what this means. So I'm going to convert it to rectangular and I'm going to hit enter and you're going to see that when you take this angle, this is the rectangular representation and this is the imaginary part. So you see the function returned the correct thing. It converted this properly. It took the imaginary part and then put it here. If you're not quite following the math behind this, like if you're looking here and you're thinking, wow, why didn't it return this? Why did it do that? That's just because maybe your skills with complex numbers themselves aren't maybe exactly where they should be. So you should go off and look at one of my other DVDs that covers all of this material when you do it by hand. But my focus here is to show you how to use the calculator to get these answers. Okay, so what if we want to convert a rectangular to a polar representation? So I could say something like, okay, one plus one I, that's my rectangular representation. Go to the math menu, over to the complex tab. I'm converting the rectangular to polar, so I'm gonna hit number seven here and I'm going to convert this rectangular form to polar and then this is the answer I'm going to get 1.14 uh, and e raised to the power of 0.785i. Now notice that they have these functions in here to convert from you know two rectangular and two polar but I already sort of showed you that you can you can really do the conversion without without messing around with that. For instance you can go back to the mode menu and just make sure and put yourself in um, in uh, in polar form which is where we're at right now so since we're in polar form if I just take this right here and just put 1 plus 1 I and just stick it on there and hit enter the calculator is going to automatically convert it to the other notation because that's what I have set there so there's really two ways to do conversion either you go into the menu and you just set what you want to convert to and then you you type your number in and it's going to automatically do it or you can go to the math menu to the complex tab and just you know set it up like this and just send it to rectangular send it to to polar now the only other two functions that are really in here are the angle function and the absolute value and these are real simple so if I want to find um, you know the angle between the real and imaginary parts of a complex number I can just do that so I could say let's, t let's pick a simple one one plus uh, I and so it's going to return the angle. This is basically taking the inverse tangent of you know, the, the, real, the, ima the imaginary part divided by the real part, which is how you convert it by hand. You're going to get 0 0.785, which is pi over 4. And pi over 4 is the angle between that. Um, if, that if, if you want to do that in degrees, then you would have to send your calculator over to degree mode. Let me come out of there. And if I input exactly the same thing, it's going to tell you it's 45 degrees. It's pi over 4. Let me go back in here and send it back to radian mode. Get out of here. Go back to the math menu. So this is basically returning the angle directly. And then returning the absolute value is, is basically in the, um, in the complex notation. The, the number in front of the, the E is, is, the, is the absolute value, the magnitude of your number. But you can return it separately by going to number five here, absolute value, and you could say, you know, five minus six or whatever. Whoops, I gotta put an I here, put an I. And then it's gonna go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem here, you know, five squared plus negative 36 squared, take the square root of all that stuff and you're gonna get um, 7.810. And that's the, the magnitude. So these aren't really, I don't wanna say they're silly functions, it's just that you don't use them that much because for instance, uh, the real part, you can read right off the imaginary number if you're dealing in, um, in rectangular form. The imaginary part, you can read right off the number if you're dealing in rectangular form. The, uh, if you're dealing in, in polar form, you can read the angle right off of the exponential, right off of the complex exponential, and you can read the magnitude, which is the absolute value. You can read that right off because that's the number that's right in front of the E if you're dealing in polar form. So really these things are, I don't want to say they're silly, it's just that you can usually read them right off your number or do a, do convert the entire number from rectangular to polar or vice versa to get your answer. These last two functions convert to rectangular and to polar, but I already showed you that you can do it even without coming into this menu by just going into the mode menu. And finally, um, the complex conjugate is a pretty simple concept. You just stick a negative out in front of the, of the um, of the imaginary part and that is the definition of the conjugate. So these are useful functions. You'll use them sometimes, definitely, but I think that a lot of times
they'll be used more for programming. If you're going to write an actual program with this calculator to do some things, manipulate some data or something like that, then you might want to pull out the imaginary part. But most of the time, you can just convert the entire number uh, from polar to rectangular or vice versa and read these things right off of the numbers. I'm Jason. I hope you've learned something from this lesson. Imaginary numbers, complex numbers, some of the most useful things in all of math. I think if you learn these functions and know how to use your calculator to, to its fullest, that um, it'll make you know, your test fly by and you'll just gain a lot more time to, to, to think about how to solve problems rather than just fiddling around with your calculator.